Kenneth I is traditionally considered to be the first King of Scots, ruling from around 843 until his death in 858. The story of Kenneth I is largely drawn from medieval chronicles and historical traditions and some details may be the result of later embellishments. Kenneth is credited with unifying the Picts and the Scots under one rule. The Picts were one of the indigenous peoples of Scotland, and the Scots were Gaelic-speaking settlers from Ireland. Kenneth's reign is seen as a critical period in which these distinct groups began to coalesce into a more unified kingdom. Kenneth is associated with the Stone of Destiny, also known as the Stone of Scone, a symbolic stone used in the coronation ceremonies of Scottish and later English monarchs. Legend has it that Kenneth brought the stone from Ireland and used it in his coronation to signify the unification of the Picts and the Scots. Kenneth I died in 858, and he was succeeded by his brother, Donald I. His death is sometimes linked to a conflict with Vikings who raided the region. Kenneth's descendants continued to rule the Kingdom of Alba, which eventually evolved into the Kingdom of Scotland. Donald I's reign faced challenges from Viking raids along the Scottish coast. The Vikings, who were seafaring Norse warriors, frequently targeted coastal areas and the British Isles during this period. Donald I's reign came to an end in 862, but the circumstances of his death are not well documented. Constantine was the son of Kenneth I, and his reign lasted 15 years, with much of it defending the kingdom against increasing Viking raids. While not much is known about his life, the general consensus is that he was killed by the Vikings in 877. Ed was the second son of Kenneth MacAlpin and ruled for only a year. During his reign, the Vikings had recaptured portions of what is now Scotland. Before he could do much about it, he was murdered in 878, likely by one of his successors, Garrick. While little is known of their origins, Gekade and Garrick may have ruled as joint kings of the Picts and the Scots. The relationship to one another is also one of speculation. There are some references that say Gekade convinced David II to murder Garrick, which he may have done, and then exiled Gekade. Other sources claim that they were deposed by Viking invaders. Donald II was the son of Constantine I, and it's said that he should have taken the throne after King Ed. Reigning for 11 years, he faced invasions from the Danes, who began to occupy lands bordering Scotland and the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. He was known as the Madman, and was killed in battle in 900. Constantine was the cousin of Donald II, and during his rule, there were continuous battles and invasions from the Norsemen, and given the duration of his reign, this was a testament to his strengths as a ruler. He is known for his efforts in pushing the Vikings out of Scotland and worked with the Northumbrians in England on this effort in hopes of establishing a more stable southern border. Constantine abdicated the throne in 943 to become a monk. Malcolm I was the son of Donald II, and he became king following Constantine II's abdication. Some chronicles state that Malcolm invaded England and he was killed in battle in 954. Indolf was the son of King Constantine II. Much of his reign involved the conquest of Lothian in Scotland, but nothing extremely notable aside from that. He died in battle against the Vikings in 962. Dove was the son of Malcolm I and ascended as king when Indolf was killed during his reign. He most notably battled Colin, who was a contender for the crown. Not much is known about Colin's rule, but it's documented that he was assassinated in 971. Kenneth II was king beginning in 971. He was the son of Malcolm I and is known for having plundered a number of towns and cities in northern England. During his reign, he faced feuds with descendants of King Indolf. Kenneth tried to change the rules of succession, allowing the nearest survivor in blood to the deceased king to succeed, paving the path to the throne to his own descendants. One story about his death is that there was a conspiracy to kill Kenneth, along with Lady Finella, whose son he had killed, and that she would personally kill him for revenge. Another later tale was that Constantine III, who was the son of Colin, along with Lady Finella, had conspired to have him killed. That tale involves Kenneth being lured to a cottage in the woods by Lady Finella, where there sat a statue connected by strings to several crossbows. Kenneth supposedly touched the statue and was shot by arrows from all sides, with Lady Finella escaping. While there isn't much consensus on his death, the attempted change of the succession rules as well as Kenneth's other actions led to his demise. Like many of his predecessors, his two-year reign faced Viking raids and continued Viking influence and continued to shape the political landscape of the region. Constantine is believed to have been killed by the Vikings. Kenneth succeeded Constantine III shortly after his death. His reign was faced with conflicts from the Scottish nobility, which could have been challenging, especially with the continuous threats from the Vikings. While these threats existed, Kenneth interacted with the Scandinavian rulers of the north, particularly with the Earl of Orkney. 
Malcolm II was equally faced with internal struggles with the Scottish nobility, but is known for consolidating his power and maintaining stability in the kingdom. In 1018, he defeated the Northumbrians at the Battle of Caram, helping to expand Scottish territory. Malcolm was associated with the Tanistry system, which was an early form of elective monarchy. His death in 1034 marked the end of the House of Alpin. Duncan was the grandson of Malcolm II and ascended to the throne upon Malcolm's death. He faced challenges to his rule primarily from his cousin Macbeth, where a power struggle is said to have played out, later inspiring Shakespeare's play. Duncan was killed in battle, possibly by Macbeth himself. Macbeth was king of Scotland from 1040 through 1057 and had a relatively stable and peaceful reign. He was known for his military campaigns, including his success in repelling the Danes and the Northumbrians. Macbeth was killed at the Battle of Lundfannon in 1057 by forces loyal to the future Malcolm III, who just so happened to be the son of Duncan I. Lulac was the stepson of Macbeth and is known for being the first king of Scotland given that he was crowned at Scone Palace and his coronation was documented. In short, Lulac was crowned and then killed in battle, and this basically sums up his reign. He was referred to as Lulac the Fool or Lulac the Simple because he seemed to be somewhat odd. Having killed Lulac in battle in 1058, Malcolm III became King of Scotland. Four of his children would eventually be Scottish kings, Duncan II, Edgar, Alexander I, and David I. One of Malcolm III's most significant accomplishments was his marriage to Margaret of Wessex, later known as St. Margaret. Margaret, an Anglo-Saxon princess, brought cultural and religious influences to the Scottish court, and the marriage strengthened ties between Scotland and England. Malcolm III met his end in 1093, during the Battle of Onwick in Northumberland, England. Donald III was the brother of Malcolm III and the son of Duncan I. He was able to leverage the tanistry system to claim the throne, driving out Malcolm's sons, at least for a bit. Donald was deposed by Duncan II in 1094, with support and assistance from William II of England. Duncan II became king in 1094 after his father's death. However, his reign faced challenges from the beginning. His rule was contested by his half-brother Edmund, who had the support of Donald III, another half-brother of Duncan II. Duncan II's reign also came to an end in 1094 when he was killed in battle, and Donald III became the King of Scotland. The circumstances surrounding Duncan II's death and the events leading up to it are not entirely clear, but there are various sources that say he was assassinated. Donald III assumed the throne again, jointly ruling with his nephew Edmund, who was the son of Malcolm III. Their rule was marked by internal strife, power struggles, and shifting alliances. Edmund was reportedly killed in 1097, and Donald III was deposed that same year by another nephew, Edgar. After seeking refuge in England after the death of his father, Malcolm III, Edgar made a return to Scotland in 1097. With the support of English forces led by King William II, Edgar was crowned king in 1097 at Scone. Edgar's reign is notable for its relative stability compared to the preceding years. He faced some challenges, including a rebellion by his uncle, Donald III, but overall, Edgar's rule brought a degree of order to the Scottish kingdom. Edgar of Scotland died in 1107, and he was succeeded by his brother, Alexander I. While Alexander I did not achieve as much historical recognition as some later Scottish monarchs, his reign played a role in stabilizing the kingdom and fostering relationships with the church and neighboring powers. His contributions to the foundations of Scottish government and his support for religious institutions left a lasting impact on the development of medieval Scotland. Alexander I died in 1124 and was succeeded by his brother, David I of Scotland. When his brother Alexander I died, David took over the throne, and he was known for establishing monasteries and for giving land to churches. David invaded England in 1038, and although he was defeated at the Battle of the Standard, he was recognized as king of an independent Scotland in accordance with the Treaty of Durham. Malcolm IV was the grandson of David I, and he was sometimes referred to as the Maiden King of Scotland, as he was known for his religious devotion, his young age, as he was 12 years old when his reign began, and the fact that he was unmarried. Malcolm died at 24 years old in 1165, and was succeeded by his brother, William the Lion. William I was known as William the Lion from his flag of a red lion rampant. He was the longest ruling Scottish monarch, and was known as a fierce warrior. His relationship with King Henry II of England was less than desirable. This eventually led to the creation of the Auld Alliance, which was a treaty between France and Scotland, which among other things, such as trade and diplomacy, 
granted support from either nation if they were invaded by England. Alexander II became king upon the death of his father. During his reign, he continued his father's efforts to expand and consolidate the Scottish kingdom and sought to extend royal authority into areas that were not fully under Scottish control. Alexander II helped establish the Treaty of York in 1237. This treaty was negotiated with King Henry III of England and sought to define and settle the Anglo-Scottish border. In 1221, he married Joan, the sister of Henry III of England, as part of efforts to foster peaceful relations between the two kingdoms. Alexander II died in 1249 during a military campaign against the Norwegians in the Western Isles. Alexander III became king on the death of his father, Alexander II. He sought to maintain peaceful relations with England during his reign. In 1258, he negotiated the Treaty of Salisbury with King Henry III of England. The treaty aimed to settle disputes and promote peaceful coexistence between the two kingdoms. He strengthened royal authority and the Scottish legal system, contributing to a more organized and effective governance. One of his most notable accomplishments was gaining sovereignty over the Western Isles and the Isle of Man from Norway. As part of diplomatic efforts to strengthen ties with England, Alexander III married Margaret, the daughter of Henry III, in 1251. However, Margaret died in 1275, and the marriage did not produce a surviving heir. One of the most significant events during Alexander III's reign was actually his sudden death in 1286. His death triggered a crisis of succession because his only surviving heir, Margaret, the maid of Norway, was a young girl who lived in Norway. The crisis eventually led to the Great Calls, which involved competing claims to the Scottish throne. The Maid of Norway was the granddaughter of Alexander III, as well as his only surviving descendant. The problem was that she was only three years old when Alexander III died in 1286, and she herself only lived until 1290. Her death led to a period of instability in Scotland, which within a few years would lead up to the First War of Scottish Independence.